No room for error anymore for the Battle Hawks when it comes to the playoff race. They got Seattle nipping at their heels. We just went over that. The good news, Jared Jones-Smith, starting left tackle back off the suspension. Feels like forever ago that D.C. and St. Louis got in that brawl post game. But some guys had to serve two-game suspensions. Jared Jones-Smith was one of them. He'll be back. The bad news, Vegas has Jeff Bidette, our Freshie Award for most exciting player at the midseason. Not going to be fun covering him, especially with three starters in the secondary listed on the injury report this week. I know St. Louis has a good pass defense, but they're they're banged up back there. Ben DeLuca will be out. I think Mike Hampton was questionable. Got some injuries. So I did see an Instagram story from Jeff Bidette the other day uh, sharing Luis Perez's stat line, which was incredible. I think he was 20 for 28 for 269 and two scores, no picks the other night. Jeff Bidette shared that stat line and captioned it, my QB1. So we're not going to paint this as him throwing shade at Brett Hundley. We're just going to watch our week one film, watch our week five film. Clearly, Perez loves Bidette. That's his favorite guy. When Hundley was in there, we saw a little bit more Martavis Bryant, Geronimo Allison. Obviously, the two were Packers together. And with Perez, it seems like more uh, SinQ Sweeting and Jeff Bidette. So I understand, you know, receivers have to play favorites sometimes, but... Looks like Perez will be the starter going forward. Uh, That Orlando game was the first time that the Vipers didn't have to deal with driving rains or heavy wind gusts, which was a great point that social media director Dylan Mooney made to us. I didn't realize that throughout the whole season, Vegas was just dealing with terrible weather. Uh, They didn't have that, and they they got their first win. Still got to be able to run the ball, though. Rod Smith did go for 62 and two scores on the ground. So that run game does take a little bit of a step forward heading into week six. We saw St. Louis get gashed by Abram Smith. That rush defense has not been very good. Certainly holes for the Vipers to exploit there. Got to feed John Lovett, guys, whether it's in the run game or the pass game. He's been that Swiss army knife. A fun fact on John Lovett, the former Baylor Bear and Penn State Nittany Lion, leading all running backs in the XFL in receiving yards. He has 162. Just for perspective, That's more than Austin Prohl and Martavis Bryant, actual receivers. John Lovett, 24.3 yards per catch. Phenomenal. Got to get him the ball. But the big stat for Vegas last week, zero sacks allowed. That was the first time they had done that all season. Again, showing you the St. Louis defense. Been great against the pass, not good against the run. Given up a lot of points so far. So what can Vegas do here to get the edge? Well, Viper faithful remember, how close that opener was in Arlington. They ultimately lost that game because of the inability to protect Luis Perez. I know he made some ill-advised throws in that game, but one of them that went to a pick six late in that game was because he had pressure in his face. They have got to hold up along that offensive front. Playmakers all over the place in Vegas. Remember, Jeff Bidette, Sin Q Sweeting. Luis Perez has a swagger bag. You got John Lovett, Torrey. All these guys are capable of making plays on the edge. Even throw in Brian and Allison and the tight ends have been great. John Price. So last in the league in sacks. Who do you think that is? The St. Louis Battlehawks. Only five sacks this season. Donnie Abraham's unit has to get a better pressure on Luis Perez. Silas Kelly, his linebacker, is banged up for this one. We'll have to check the status on him. Doesn't look like he's going to play Saturday night. And again, some injuries in the secondary as well. Other side of the ball. This is where St. Louis, I would say, has a pretty big edge. Quentin Dormady made that Vegas secondary look silly the other night. We heard Rod Woodson make a comment at the end of that game. We have to get a first down. We cannot put our defense back out there. Which makes me wonder. Dwayne Taylor fired, remember, after I think the Vegas Vipers had the fifth total offense in the league. There were definitely worse offenses. And coordinators like in Arlington and San Antonio that were able to hold on to their jobs for longer than Dwayne Taylor. And again, maybe it was more than just what Rod Woodson was looking at on the field product. There could have been attitude issues, a number of things that could have happened. But remember, I would like Rod Woodson to keep that same energy with Chris Dishman because this defense has not been good for Vegas. I know some guys have been banged up, they're getting some players back. But AJ McCarron will tear this secondary apart if they don't get their footing under them. Think about Danucci in week three, what he did to this Vegas secondary. He was just launching balls up in the air at that point, knowing 
that his receivers were going to win the battle, regardless of where he threw it. McCarron has a chance to have his best game so far here. I think St. Louis has faced the toughest schedule up to this point so far. They have not played Vegas. They have not played Orlando. But this is a tough trap spot for them. Vipers are just hitting their stride. Now they believe they can win with another one under their belt. They could keep stacking wins. They can make this thing a race. Vegas has the capability to do so. I just don't know. I haven't seen enough from their defense yet. And that defense has Max Roberts banged up. He's probably the best athlete in that front seven. Rob Windsor also been dealing with injuries. So you got PETA, number zero in there in the pass rush. He got to make it happen. That St. Louis receiving core could definitely make the Vipers pay. 236 and two scores for A.J. McCarron against D.C. And it was our unanimous selection for first-team all-pro quarterback was A.J. McCarron. I think that a lot of you would have arguments for Danucci, for Brandon Silvers. I go A.J. McCarron. I think he's been the best so far, even though the record hasn't reflected it. Got Akeem Butler, Darius Shepard, Austin Prohl, Stephen Mitchell, plus George Campbell even scored. So a lot of a lot of weapons for him. I think Vegas, again, struggles defending the pass. I was very close on this one, Zook. I do think it's a little bit of a trap spot. I got St. Louis to win, but Vegas to cover here. Who are you going with on Saturday night? FX. Bounce back game for St. Louis. The Battle Hawks will be 4-2 and two at that point. And like I said, they have faced the toughest schedule, in my opinion, so far. Now, now Seattle has had it rough with five games in 25 days. Sure. But I think from an opponent perspective, being able to avoid Vegas and Orlando. I know it's something you talked about with D.C. They got uh, Vegas twice. Right. Houston got Orlando twice. St. Louis hasn't seen either of those, and they've still managed to go 3-2. and two. Right, So now they're going to see those teams coming down the stretch. That's why it's going to be so tough for St. Louis and Seattle in the north. You going Battle Hawks? Do the Battle Hawks cover the three? I don't think so. Okay. Oh, I mean, yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. Well, I'm Zook sorry. with a late change of his best bet here. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. They, St. Louis covers. For as sure. long as Mikey doesn't pick St. Louis, I think we're safe. Who knows? And he's obviously going to take the Vegas Vipers. He was right last week. And, and let me just address something, Mike. You're going to say, oh, we didn't put you on man to man with Mikey Manziel because Vegas won. That was not the case, okay? We had a programming note on our Twitter that we were going to do a special episode on Monday night. That was the Freshie Awards, and that was a big success. And Mike got to be on the Freshie Awards. He even got to present a few fun facts about players. 